Now that you understand each scale of costs, we need to talk about how to actually recover the costs from the opposition. So welcome to this final episode on legal costs. Once the court order, inclusive of the cost award, has been stamped and signed by the judge or magistrate and registrar or clerk, it will become enforceable. As a starting point, take note that before the successful litigant will be able to recover her costs, the following must take place. A bill of costs must be drawn up. The bill of costs must be served on the opposition together with the notice of intention to tax. The opposition must be afforded an opportunity to oppose the bill of costs and the bill of costs must be taxed by the taxing master. Take note that a taxing master may not tax a bill of costs without a court order. Okay, let's go through each step in the process highlighted above. What is a bill of costs? A bill of costs is a document that resembles an account itemizing the client's legal expenditure. It provides a detailed breakdown of the costs incurred during the litigation, including legal fees, disbursements, and other expenses. The bill of costs can be prepared by the client's attorneys or by appointed cost consultants. Cost consultants are attorneys who specialize in drafting, presenting, and opposing bills of costs. It's important to note that if the bill of costs is prepared by a cost consultant, the client's attorney must certify that he has reviewed the bill of costs and found it to be correct, and every description in the bill, including work, time, and figures, is consistent with what was necessarily done. What must be included in a bill of costs? A bill of costs typically includes the following information. Identification of the parties involved, detailed description of the services provided by the attorney, time spent on each task where applicable, rate, fee, or tariff for each task based on the award or cost scale, disbursements such as sheriff, advocate, and witness fees where applicable, total amount due in accordance with the bill. The above information must be presented as individual items each dated and precisely stating its subject matter. Vague and general terms should be avoided, and each item should be charged specifically. When correspondent attorneys are involved, their fees must be included in a separate bill of costs, rather than added as a disbursement. The fees are subject to the same taxation provisions outlined in the rules. It is crucial to draft the bill of costs carefully. In the case of Greenberg v Mortimer, it was held that a taxing master is obliged to tax a properly submitted bill, and partial taxation is generally not allowed. Parties submitting an imperfect bill of costs bear the risk of non-persuasion. Entries in a bill of costs may look similar to the following. The date, draw letter of demand, two folio, 60 rand. Date, copies of letter of demand, 10 pages, 45 rand. Please refer to the example of a bill of costs in the episode notes to be released and stay tuned for an upcoming episode on drafting a bill of costs. The following is some additional information insofar as giving notice of the taxation is concerned. Once the bill of costs is drafted and signed, it must be served on the opposition. Before service, a notice of intention to tax the bill of costs should be prepared. The notice should include a bill of costs and its annexures, such as advocates' invoices and returns of service. As per the uniform rules of court and the magistrate's court rules, the notice of intention to tax must include the following details. The party liable to pay costs has the opportunity to inspect relevant documents or notes related to any item on the bill of costs within a specified time frame. The receiving party must deliver a written notice of opposition within 10 days after the initial 10-day period, specifying the objective items and providing a brief summary of the reasons for objection the date, time, and place of the taxation, scheduled no less than 10 days from receipt of the notice, and the party is entitled to be present. The period from 16 December to 15 January, inclusive, is excluded from the time allowed for document inspection or giving a written notice to oppose. Taxation between 16 December and 15 January, inclusive, is generally not permitted, except in the following cases. The notice to oppose period has expired before 16 December and no notice of intention to oppose has been delivered. The party liable to pay costs has provided written consent to taxation in their absence and taxation of writ and post-writ bills. According to Erasmus Superior Court Practice, failure to provide due notice of taxation to the party liable to pay costs may prevent the taxing master from proceeding with the taxation, 
except in exceptional circumstances. Notice of taxation must be given to the party primarily liable for costs. Notice of taxation can be given at a chosen domicilium sitandi at executandi. If a party deliberately avoids notice of taxation, the court can assume that the judgment creditor has fulfilled the sub-rule's requirements through the doctrine of fictional fulfillment. If a third party is joined through a third party notice and becomes jointly and severally liable for costs, they are entitled to receive notice of the taxation and be present at the taxation. When a third party has agreed to pay certain tax costs between litigants, notice of taxation is not required before recovering such costs, nor is there a specific procedure for taxing costs against that party. However, if a third party has guaranteed payment of costs incurred by litigants, the bill of costs may be retaxed after providing notice to the guarantor if they raise objections. Please note that if the party liable to pay the cost does not deliver a notice of intention to oppose, the bill may be taxed on an unopposed basis. Additionally, the taxing master has no authority to condone the late filing of the notice of opposition, so the party liable must ensure timely delivery of the relevant notice. Once notice of taxation has been given, the taxation will proceed on the scheduled date, whether it is opposed or unopposed. Bills of costs are reviewed and assessed by the taxing master, an official of the court responsible for hearing and making orders on bills of costs. It is important to note that legal representatives of the parties involved, including cost consultants, must have the necessary right of appearance at the taxation. During the taxation, the taxing master will carefully examine the bill of costs to verify the accuracy of entries and amounts. The taxing master has the final say in determining the correctness of the stated amounts. The taxing master must also assess whether the services for which fees have been charged and the bill of costs prepared have actually been rendered. Rule 70 subsection 2 allows the taxing master to request any necessary books, documents, papers or accounts during the taxation process to properly determine any matters that arise. The taxing master has discretion when taxing a bill of costs to deviate from the tariff based on what is considered fair and reasonable. This discretion allows the taxing master to reduce certain amounts. For example, if a bill includes a claim of 10,000 Rand for drafting a summons, which allegedly took 10 hours, the taxing master could find that the claim time unreasonable and only allow 7,000. After the bill has been taxed, the taxing master will issue a signed and stamped certificate known as an allocateur. This certificate officially permits the recovery of the tax amount from the opposition. If payment of the tax bill of costs is not received, the successful party can utilize standard execution methods to recover the amount. If any party is dissatisfied with the taxing master's ruling on an objected or disallowed item, they have 15 days after the allocature to request the taxing master to present a case for the decision of a judge. This procedure is known as review. Refer to Uniform Rule 48 for more details. Just some additional information regarding taxations. The taxing master of the court where the litigation occurred has jurisdiction to tax a bill of costs related to that litigation. Rule 75A subsection A permits the taxing master to award wasted costs if the taxing party or their attorney fails to appear at the taxation or withdraws their bill of costs. In the case of a foreign attorney, one practicing outside of South Africa and not subject to the discipline of any division of the High Court, the taxing master cannot tax their bill of costs directly. However, the foreign bill of costs may be considered as a voucher for work done in connection with the lawsuit. The taxing master must scrutinize it and rely on a certificate from the foreign court accordingly. A taxing master is required, as per Trollope First Taxing Mistress High Court, to approach the task of taxing a bill of costs with an open mind. The applicability of VAT depends on the relevant statutory provisions and their interpretation in light of the facts. The taxing master has the function of determining whether VAT inclusion in the bill of costs is appropriate or not, without discretion. The winner must demonstrate to the taxing master that the items in the bill of costs are true costs, in other words, expenses that have actually caused financial loss to the winner. And that concludes the episode on recovering legal costs. And in fact, that concludes our series on legal costs. I hope that you guys have learned something from this. And I will get the next episode to you in due course. Thanks so much. Bye.